Welcome to our Epic Failures in Evolution series. I'm your host, Rich Deem of GodandScience.org. The fourth in our series examines the peppered moth. Many creationists and IG proponents have said that peppered moths are not a good example of natural selection, which is wrong. Evolutionists originally said the peppered moths were a good example of evolution in action, which is also wrong. The scientific explanation of the peppered moth variation was found in 2011, but did not make the popular press. Why is that? Prior to 1848 in Britain, virtually all peppered moths were speckled with both black and white scales. The peppered Typica variety is quite well camouflaged on lichen-colored branches. In the mid-1800s, the Industrial Revolution took off, and industrial cities of Britain produced lots of pollution and killed the lichen and darkened tree branches with soot. In 1848, a new all-black variety of peppered moths, named Carbonaria, appeared. These moths were much better camouflaged compared to Typica, which is quite readily seen. By the turn of the 20th century, Carbonaria replaced Typica by up to 98% in polluted forest. Clean air legislation passed in the 1950s resulted in restoration of the British woodlands and the frequency of carbon area declined dramatically. Two main theories were proposed to explain the rise of industrial melanism in peppered moths. Initially, most scientists believed industrial pollutants had changed moth development to produce the dark color. However, experiments designed to test this hypothesis had conflicting results. James Tupp proposed in 1896 that natural selection favored the survival of better camouflaged moths and that birds were the selective agents. Bernard Kettlewell was the first scientist to examine Tutt's natural selection hypothesis. First, he compared the visibility of Typica and Carbonaria on light trees and dark trees to human observers. The results showed that Typica is much more visible on dark wood and Carbonaria is much more visible on light wood. This is a graph of the frequency of Typica and Carbonaria in polluted and unpolluted forests. Carbonaria had a much higher frequency in polluted woods, whereas Typica had a much higher frequency in unpolluted woods. In other experiments, Kettlewell marked and released the two forms of moths in these two forests and measured their recapture frequencies. This graph shows the recapture frequency for Carbonaria was much higher than Typica in polluted woods, whereas Typica was recaptured more frequently in unpolluted woods. These kinds of experiments were verified independently by other researchers, demonstrating that bird predation was the selective agent. Lawrence Cook kept nearly 40 years of Carbonaria frequencies in Leeds, showing that the anti-pollution laws of the 1950s have resulted in the gradual replacement of Carbonaria by Typica as lichens returned to the trees and soot disappeared. Kettlewell's experiments had lots of critics, especially recently among young earth creationists and intelligent design proponents. One objection was that bats might be the major predator of moths, since both fly at night. Here's a picture of a bat. You've heard the expression, blind as a bat. Bats don't hunt by sight, but by sonar, which is why they have those large ears. This is a graph of the predation of Typica versus Carbonaria by bats over a three-year period. As expected, bats have no preference of one moth form over another. Michael Majerus performed a six-year study using nearly 5,000 moths to correct all the deficits in Ketterwell's methods. Here are the results of the study, showing that Typica has better survival than Carbonaria in an era when pollution was minimal. So these results show that the peppered moth is an excellent example of natural selection in action. What has been missing from the peppered moth story is how much evolution has actually occurred. Initial examination of peppered moth genetics focused on the melanin genes responsible for black pigment obvious target genes, showing that those genes were not responsible for industrial melanism. However, this genome-wide study, published in 2011, has definitively answered the question. The genome-wide study showed that Carbonaria was caused by a single base pair mutation found on chromosome 17 in a region that determined wing patterning. The study concluded that Carbonaria mutation was a one-time event that occurred in the recent past just in time for the Industrial Revolution. It was not due to some dramatic evolutionary change, 
but just a single base pair mutation that broke the wing patterning gene, eliminating the intricate peppered appearance, which resulted in an all-black moth. So peppered moths represent an excellent example of natural selection. However, the peppered moth mutation was not the result of some massive evolutionary change, just a one base pair change that broke the wing patterning gene, which is why the story never made it to the popular press. So, from an evolutionary viewpoint, the peppered moth is an epic failure. More information can be found online at our website, godandscience.org. Thanks for watching, and be sure to sign up for updates from our YouTube channel.